Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at a 5-color Eldrazi deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon featuring Ulalek, Fused Atrocity as our commander. This can be cast for a mix of colorless and or colored mana, which is why you'll notice in the mana base we're playing all 10 pain lands since these can produce both types of mana and we'll need lots of colorless mana to activate Ulalek's ability whenever we cast an Eldrazi spell. Doesn't have to be a creature spell since there's some non-creature Eldrazi in the deck as well now. We can pay double colorless. If we do, copy all spells we control and then copy all other activated and triggered abilities we control as well. So that's one way to maybe copy those cast triggers we get from casting some of our powerful Eldrazi. So those will also get copied by Ulalek. But there's some other abilities we can copy as well, thinking of cards like Up the Beanstalk, which draws a card whenever we cast a spell with mana value 5 or greater. That's also an ability that will go on the stack and we can also maybe copy with Ulalek if we have the mana for it. But of course it does require a lot of mana to cast a somewhat powerful Eldrazi and also pay the two extra mana on top of that. So that's why a very large section of our deck is dedicated to a ramp. And then if you take a look at the top end of our curve, we're playing all the Eldrazi Titans available on Arena. So those also require a lot of mana. So once again, we need as much mana as we can get our hands on. We've got some mana creatures to make additional mana, as well as some ramp artifacts, which can also help make additional colorless mana. So those are perfect. And then taking a look at some of the more expensive ramp cards, they include ways to discount or Eldrazi or colorless spells with Ugin. We've got Hedron Archive making two mana, and then some other Eldrazi that maybe leave behind spawn tokens that can also be sacrificed to make additional mana for us. Then we've got a section dedicated to some of the engine cards of the deck, ways to provide additional card advantage or repeatedly trigger to draw extra cards or maybe make tokens in the process. Then we've got some of our mid-range Eldrazi between 2 and 5 mana. And then at the top end of our curve includes some 7 plus mana Eldrazi that we're hoping to get in play and maybe even copy their abilities with Ulalek. So these can also be game winning if we can resolve them. And then uh, taking a look at the mana base real quick, I also want to highlight Ugin's Labyrinth, one of the more powerful additions from Modern Horizons 3, as we can now imprint one of those expensive colorless cards, and then it can tap for double colorless, so that's another way of kind of ramping and accelerating our mana. And now for the deep dive, our mana creatures include Avacyn's Pilgrim, Halfling, Mystic, and the Lenor Elves at 1 mana. At 2 mana we've got Explore and Growth Spiral to play an extra land and draw a card. And then our 2 mana ramp artifacts include Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone, and the Iron Crag. And then we're also playing it that heralds the end to give our 7 plus mana cards a 1 mana discount. And other colorless creatures also get plus 1 plus 1, especially nice if we're going wide with some of our spawn tokens. Then the repurposer makes a spawn token when we cast it and when it dies, so also decent to copy with Ulalek. Got the Void Craw, which is very similar to Palladium Mirror, tapping for double colorless, but this one's also an Eldrazi that can maybe draw additional cards in the late game. Palladium Mirror is still worth running, since the ability is very nice alongside Ulalek. And then the Flash Raker, another great one to copy, as it can repeatedly make spawn tokens and also ping the opponent at the same time, so it's also a win condition. And then the Incubator can name Eldrazi, giving all Eldrazi a 2 mana discount. So this is symmetrical, so you have to be very careful playing this in the mirror match, but otherwise a nice way to cast multiple Eldrazi in the same turn. Now discounting by 2 doesn't help us discount Ulalek, since it requires colorless mana specifically, which is different from the generic mana discount, but it can still help once Ulalek gets removed and we have the commander tax to pay. And then there's a Worn Power Stone, kind of the creatureless version of Palladium Mirror entering tapped. And then at 4 mana, Path of Annihilation is great, making all our Eldrazi tap for mana. And then they can still be sacrificed if they're spawn tokens, so those can make 2 mana, and then can also gain additional life. Then the Myco spawns one of the better Eldrazi, as we can not only ramp, but if we kicked it, we can also exile an opposing land, so especially devastating if we can copy it with Ulalek. A writhing Chrysalis, say that five times fast, makes a pair of spawn tokens and grows when those get sacrificed. Archive immediately taps for double colorless. Then the spawn gang commander, a callback to siege gang, makes three spawn tokens and we can sacrifice Eldrazi to deal two damage. We've got Mirarius Wake to potentially double our mana produced by our lands, giving the team plus one plus one. Forsaken Monument gives our colorless creatures plus two plus two, can gain additional life, and then if we tap a permanent for colorless mana, we get an additional one, so it can also be very nice in casting some of our Eldrazi Titans. The Dreamstone taps for triple colorless, 
Immortal Sun shuts down all Planeswalkers. We only have Ugin in our deck, so we don't really mind. And then this also draws us extra cards, gives us a discount, and also pumps a team by one. And there's Ugin, giving us a two mana discount on all our colorless spells, so definitely worth it here. And then can also start uh, manifesting spirits off the top of our deck. And then we've got Kozilex Command, which is also quite versatile, often exiling an opposing creature and making a bunch of spawn tokens. And then moving on to our engine cards, often enchantments, we've got Up the Beanstalk, as we mentioned earlier. Kozilex Unsealing can also be copied with Ulalek, giving us additional spawn tokens, or best case scenario, drawing three additional cards. Ugin's Binding's a pretty expensive bound spell for three mana, but if we have it in the graveyard and cast a colorless spell with mana value seven or greater, we can exile it, and then it turns into a Cyclonic Rift, bouncing all of the opponent's non-land permanents back. The Realm Walker can start playing Eldrazi off the top of the deck. Mystic Forge can play Colos spells off the top of the deck, so that includes more than just Eldrazi, as we can also play our artifacts. There's a Roaming Throne to double the triggers of our Eldrazi. Now, of course, cast triggers don't necessarily get doubled by Roaming Throne, but we can also copy Ulalek's ability, so we can now maybe pay four mana to copy an Eldrazi twice, which is pretty exciting. And then even some triggers like Annihilator can still trigger additional times, so there's still plenty of synergy throughout. And then a Kindred Discovery is also very nice, drawing cards whenever Eldrazi enter or whenever they attack, so especially good with our tokens. And then Echoes of Eternity, a Kindred Enchantment Eldrazi, so it can also be copied by Ulalek, and itself also makes additional copies and gives us additional triggers, so it can also be incredibly powerful when it goes off. And then we get to some of our mid-range Eldrazi, including the Battle Mage, which can be kicked to either take out artifacts and enchantments, and or maybe bounce opposing creatures back. Got a Displacer to flicker creatures. Now it's not gonna necessarily have a lot of ETB effects to flicker on our side, but still a nice way to keep opposing creatures under control. Then we've got the Line Breaker to give our team haste. We've got the Thief of Existence, which can maybe deal with opposing artifacts and enchantments. Eternal Scourge can keep coming back from exile, so very nice against control decks. And then also a great creature to sacrifice to emerge, and there's a few of those Eldrazi in the deck. Got Matter Reshaper, another good one to sacrifice, and a nice speed bump against aggro decks, providing value when it dies. Thought Not Seer gives us a bit of hand disruption, and then a Titan's Vanguard can provide us with additional plus one counters when we cast it and when it starts attacking. And then moving on to the heavy hitters, there's a World Breaker, which can exile an opposing land, artifact, or enchantment when we cast it, and can also maybe come back from the graveyard. Drowner of Truth can either be a land or a seven mana Eldrazi, making some spawn tokens. Then a Devourer of Destiny is great to have in your opening hand, giving you additional card selection. And then once you cast it, can still exile target permanent that's one or more colors. Lands, of course, are typically colorless, so can't exile those. And then most artifacts and Eldrazi are going to be colorless as well, but still a very nice removal spell. And then there's Null Drifter, which we can evoke in the early game to draw to. And then later, if we cast it, we still draw to and get a 4-4 Flying Annihilator 1 that can make the opponent sacrifice some of their permanents. Breaker of Creation can gain us a bunch of life and then has Hexproof from each color and Annihilator 2. So that can also go off, especially alongside Roaming Throne, making the opponent sacrifice four permanents when it attacks. Then we've got one of our Emerge creatures, Elder Deep Fiend. Requires a bit of a sacrifice to cast it on the cheap, but then we can maybe play it in the opponent's upkeep to tamp down some of their lands or ramp artifacts, or maybe even some of their creatures, so they won't be able to do much in their turn. And another Emerge creature here, the Legendary Dragon, a 6-6, saying whenever we cast it, we may exile our hand if we do draw three cards, and then each creature spell we cast has Emerge, and its Emerge cost is equal to its mana cost. So that can also be a nice way to cheat or more expensive Eldrazi into play. Then there's the new Kozilek, giving our team a plus three plus two, and when we cast it, up to two target players each manifest two cards from their hands. Once we select those players, the manifesting is not optional, so it can force the opponent to do so, and then for each card manifested this way we draw a card, so we could potentially draw four cards that way. Then we've got the previous Kozilek, which can also refresh our hands if we cast it, and then can maybe counter spells for free. Got Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, exiling two permanents when we cast it. Got Ulamog the Defiler, which doesn't really have that immediate impact, but can still exile half of the opponent's library. And then if we do get to untap with it, can annihilate the opponent's entire board when it attacks. 
And then uh, finally, we've got a new Emrakul, a 1212, when we cast it, gains control of all creatures, target player controls, flying protection from spells, protection from permanents that were cast this turn, and when it leaves the battlefield, sacrifice all creatures you control, and we can also potentially madness it, but we don't really have lots of uh, discard outlets to make that happen. And then we've got the 13 mana Emrakul to steal the opponent's turn. So no shortage of powerful Eldrazi, as you can see. And then our mana base has all 10 pain lands, as we mentioned. We've got most of the shock lands as well. Don't have the black-white ones, since we don't have a ton of black and white spells throughout the deck. In fact, if you look at our spells, we don't really need black mana outside of Ulalak, perhaps. But it's still nice to have some of these fetch lands and shock lands to have more options during the games. And then we've got uh, Radiant Fountain to maybe gain some life. Labyrinth, as we mentioned, is great. And then one of each basic except for Swamp. Lots of fetch lands. And then some utility lands here, including Cavern of Souls, is particularly useful, making our Eldrazi uncounterable. And then we also have some of these other creature type lands that can both make colorless mana as well as colored mana. So they're especially useful here. And then I'm also playing one Wastes, which we can maybe fetch up with a Prismatic Vista and some of our other effects. So that can still come in handy if we specifically need colorless mana. And we won't be able to fetch that one up with your typical multicolored fetch lands. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw here facing Uro, blue-green ramp. Our hand is a little clunky, lots of three drops, only two lands. Um, Kozilex commands, I guess, is a way of exiling Uro from the graveyard, for what it's worth. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a mulligan, look for something with a bit more ramp in it. This is not great, but the Flesh Raker is decent. So hopefully we'll uh, find some other cheap Eldrazi to make tokens with. Other colorless spells could work too. And then we have colorless mana with Sulphur Springs to help out. Turn one Kami, opponent putting a land in play. So good see turn to Uro. Hedron Archive could be decent. For now we're just gonna fetch up another dual land. Don't have any strong preferences on which land to get. Could make it a red source so we don't have to pay life when casting Vanguard. So red white or red green. For now we'll follow Haven. That's fine. And take one from Kami. Halfling's a little late to the party here. I think we prioritize Flesh Raker, then next turn Archive. A migration path for more ramp. Still not too many cards in graveyards, so they won't be escaping Uro next turn. But they could cast some expensive spells for sure. May as well hit for two. They could jump with Kami to put it in the graveyard, and their opponent obliges. So now four cards total. I guess her opponent sent Ura back to the command zone as opposed to in the graveyard. So don't have to worry about Uro escaping Kogla, that's kind of an issue. Takes out Flesh Raker. Luckily to have Ugin as an answer before Kogla gets to attack our Hedron Archive. And there's another artifact we definitely want to try to protect. So Kogla down. And then next turn we can look into Monument. Probably gonna see something expensive and scary. A Thorn Mammoth, yeah, that counts. 
takes out our token for free. And if we don't find an answer, it can keep destroying our creatures turn after turn. But uh, I guess we can develop our monument in the meantime. Plus Ugin. Alright, Ulamog would be nice to have in hand. So if I play Monument, I want to tap my non-colorless sources first. Could also fetch a Wastes here. And then with all this mana, what's our plan? Because I guess we can think ahead here. Yeah, I'll have a bunch of colorless mana. We can play Ulalek, but in the face of Thorn Mammoth, that's not great. Unless we can cast something in the same turn. So probably want to keep green mana available so we can World Breaker. And then uh, take it from there, basically. I guess I could also just fetch a green source with Prismatic Vista. Cast World Breaker. And take out the Enchanted Land. So set them back on two mana. Right, and have a 7-9 World Breaker thanks to Monument, so that can maybe hold off the Mammoth. Utopia Sprawl. Enchant Forest. Essentially pays for itself. At the very least it can replay Uro. And that's what I'll do. Can take out my Manifest token. But that does give us an Ulamog, not that the opponent knows about it. They do still have two mana available, which could represent all sorts of things. It's going to be a tamped hench maze. So not too worried about a counter spell. Ooh, a witness protection. That's a good one. And yeah, now opponent can attack Ugin. And we lose that two mana discount, which was very helpful. Probably fine to just let damage happen, since we don't get to take out the uh, Mammoth. Yeah, that was a very effective play for one mana. Also a very good answer to commanders, for what it's worth. Alright, I think we just cast Ulamog here. Should get pretty large. And then if they don't have an answer, it can just annihilate the opponent's board next turn. So... 17, 17, Annihilator 8. Opponent escapes Uro. They'll need another Witness Protection like effect. So, World Breaker down can still. Maybe activate it out of the graveyard. But it does not look like our opponent has an answer to Ulamog. And I think I'm just gonna turn it sideways for starters, and then we can reevaluate. Archer's Charm takes out Monuments. Fair enough. So now I regret not casting more stuff first main. But it's still possible they have a counter spell up here. Our opponent is hanging in there, so they still believe. One forest left. Take 15, I suppose. And then opponent could still play an elf to trigger Mammoth next turn, which could still take out the likes of Ulalek. So instead we might want to go wide with more tokens. Play this plus maybe a Realm Walker or Matter Reshaper. And then next turn we can maybe pump up the team. But uh, they're probably not going to find an answer to Ulamog. Can just take 12. And that's all she wrote. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play, facing Koth, Monorat Control. We've got a decent hand for the matchup, I think. With some mana acceleration, that's harder for the opponent to interact with. And then, uh, hopefully we'll just ramp out some big Eldrazi that can survive their burn spells. Mirari's Wakes also excellent, since uh, while they may have answers to artifacts, they're not going to have answers to enchantments. And we'll save everyone some time. Okay. Cold Steel Hearts. Probably going to have to wait until we play Hidden Archive first. Ideally draw land next turn, so we can play both. And there we go. And then next turn, Mirari's Wake is looking good. And name red. Opponent can play Koth, start plussing, work up towards an ultimate. Um, the Beanstalk's not bad either, so we'll time these first, I guess. I don't have enough green mana, so maybe should have named green with Cold Steel Heart, uh, but that's okay. Can still play Wake and then Power Stone, and then next turn we'll have double green. So I should be able to maybe run out my commander after playing up the Beanstalk. And yeah, we have to start pressuring Koth because it's already up to eight, so can Emblem next turn. Might still be able to beat the emblem, but it's not going to be easy. And now a Cavalier of Flame to improve their hand. So they've got a blocker. And a Mystic Forge. So I think step one, Beanstalk. Try to use maybe one of each. Then play Ulalek. Yeah, I should be able to play Vanguard and copy it. And then we get to copy the Beanstalk trigger as well, so that's nice. Alright, Devour would have been the perfect answer to Koth, but now our opponent does get to ultimate. Just gotta hope to beat it somehow. Four damage for each mountain. Yeah, might still be doable. It's not like our opponent's ramping and putting additional mountains on the battlefield. So it's gonna be one per turn. Our creatures can survive four damage for now. So our opponent goes face. And next turn I can maybe copy the Devour, Exile Cavalier, maybe something else. Can't Exile Colorless Artifacts like Key. And a Guardian Idol. Okay. Cavern Name Eldrazi. And we're gonna keep it simple here. Exile both. I will never stop fighting. Can still play Mystic Forge and uh, Scourge. Probably don't need Elves. And an Elder Deep Fiend, I can still emerge. So that's pretty awesome. Set some stops.
checkpoint at one. And then before they get to untap, emerge, sacrificing uh, five mana is enough, so can sack this. And that triggers. Probably uh, could have tapped a little bit better. Use my watery grave, keep cavern to copy with all ability, but uh, yeah, that's not gonna matter. Two, three, four. So can't pay here, sadly, since I uh, should have used Watery Grave. But yeah, now our opponent only has five mana to work with. And at one life, I don't see them recovering. Well, Demonic Tutor is a start, I guess. Just need a red scape shift. And that would be lethal, perhaps. Hazard yourself. All right, good game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Shana, a life gain deck. Our hand is a little slow to get started, admittedly. All three drops. So I think I'm going to look for something a little faster out of the gates. This can potentially work. Foothills fetch a dual land. Play Vista, can spiral onto or play Signet. Now we'll be a little bit low on colorless mana to cast Kozilek's Command. So we're hoping to find some of our pain lands, or we can maybe fetch for basic wastes. But then I'll need to find an extra blue or green. I guess that's maybe a reason to play the Signet first. Turn one Pilgrim. So we'll get a breeding pool here. And then we drew the wastes. In that case, I mean, I can still kind of postpone the decision on Growth Spiral and Prismatic Vista. Play the Signets. And now Boromir can punish free spells. Don't have too many of those in the deck. All right, brush line's not bad. So where are we at? Can spiral, and then if I fetch up a blue source with Vista, we can still cast Binding. And then... I guess I'll wait and see what our opponent does. This is an instant. It's gonna be Archangel Elspeth. Likely making a token. Hoping they minus two so we can bounce whatever they target. Okay, so got rewarded for waiting. As we can now get an island. And bounce Boromir. Find the Kindred Discovery. That might be worth playing before we play Ulalek. Just to get the cards flowing. And then uh, Kindred Discovery into Kozilek's Command is also pretty sweet. Since we can just make a bunch of tokens to draw cards. Alright, sign me up. Hopefully they can ultra remove my enchantment. Basilisk Collar, an equipment to give Death Touch and Lifelink into Shanna. Okay, that's all fine. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna Kozilex Command, could do so at instant speed. And then I'm likely exiling a creature as well. X equals 5. Bobble's acceptable. And just hitting for one here. Okay. We'll uh, probably just take it for now. And then see what our opponent does. If they just want to draw with Shana. 
or if they have other planes. Alright, I think we do Exile Shanna now. And then Ugin's Binding triggers as well, kind of forgot about that one. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, cast that one as well. Hopefully they let it resolve so I can draw a bunch of cards. And Gross Parallel, that one's acceptable. And then Sag Bobble. So at least they get to develop their mana a little bit. But they're about to be pretty far behind once we slam down Kozilek with all these tokens on the battlefield. Oh yes. Take my turn. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna play Kozilek here. I'm just gonna target myself so the opponent cannot put any blockers on the battlefields. And then lands, maybe Halfling. And smash. And that's uh, four more draws of Discovery. So yeah, Kozilex Command plus Kindred Discovery is a pretty awesome combo. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Roxanne. This is a tough matchup because both are kind of ramp decks, but our opponent's commander actually provides immediate value when they play it and can also take out our mana creatures. Luckily we have a hand without mana elves, so our artifacts might survive and then, yeah, I mean Forsaken Monument's not bad here. So I have to think about which color to fetch, might have wanted to hold Misty Rainforest for a while, but we know we'll need green and then also have some double red cards, so Stomping Ground seems fine. And then start playing some of my colorless sources for Forsaken Monuments. Don't really need to name black. Fine to just go for a red again. An Archimancer to discount red and green spells. And we'll go Power Stone, fetch a tap land. Although, maybe I actually want to play a colorless source. Can also fetch Wastes with Prismatic Vista. Again, because the more colorless sources, the better Forsaken Monument gets. Now, Ruby's next. That's fine. And a Cultivate. So, next turn, they can play a Roxanne. But uh, yeah, maybe we get to cast Emrakul. One of the Eldrazi Titans we have yet to cast. So we can play Courtyard since it also makes Colas. And then next turn we might be there already. So I hope they just tap out for Roxanne and that's it. Garrick Uprising is acceptable. And Roxanne. Okay. Who's ready for Amrakul, the world anew? Let's fetch a waste. Double tap Q to float all our mana. And uh, that should leave enough for it that heralds the end as well. And gain control of all creatures, target player controls. Thank you very much. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw facing the Necro Bloom, so a ramp deck, and uh, sure, we've got a Keeper, I think. Mystic sets up turn to Incubator, 
This card is symmetrical, by the way, so if the opponent's playing an Eldrazi deck, this could be a double-edged sword, but don't expect too many Eldrazi out of the Necrobloom deck. Thoughtseize is painful, likely takes our Mystic. And that's gonna slow us down by a whole turn. So I guess we can fetch in the meantime. We do eventually need double reds and double blue as well, so I can fetch a steam vents maybe. And then we'll fetch again. Sacred Foundry could work. Or I could get a, a green source so I don't have to pay a life to Yavimaya Coast. So in that case, Stomping Ground. So we still have double red for some of our spells. Incubator also doesn't really help ramp out Ulalek since it discounts by two generic mana and this requires colorless mana. So, a bit of a number with our commander, but it does help with our author, Eldrazi. So I think it's still worth it. And then next turn maybe go for Path of Annihilation for starters. Could also play Archive. All the Archive is going to be better if we can actually tap it for mana and use that mana in the same turn. Opponent's gonna Buseju, okay. Don't actually mind since we didn't have many Eldrazi in hand anyway. And I get to fetch another land. Can maybe get black mana. Make it blue-black, although I already have blue-black in hand, so maybe white-black is fine then. Okay, and then... Could go Archive into Explore. That looks okay. Making sure to leave green mana untapped. And then uh, next turn can maybe get our commander going. Our opponents can eventually get back with Seiju if they sank the Analyst. Currently the only land in Graveyard. Might see the Necrobloom. And then I expect a deck like this to play quite a few fetch lands as well to enable landfall twice. Okay, Squirming Emergence gets back Timeless Witness. Which could get back... Buseju, okay. Are they gonna channel it once again? Maybe they're afraid of Mystic Forge. Nope, they're just gonna play it as a land. So no lands in hand is the assumption here. Okay, so we get to untap with 7, 8, 9 mana. So this name's Eldrazi. Can't quite play Ulalek and then copy the Flesh Raker, but that's the plan. So maybe we play Path into Ulalek and then uh, next turn we can start copying. So we'll have plenty of mana can tap our spawn tokens and then still sacrifice them, so they essentially make two mana each. And finally, the Necrobloom Buried Rune can eventually get back an artifact. Don't see any in the graveyard yet. Okay. So, step one, play Flesh Raker. And then I um, have to be somewhat careful with how we tap our mana, so we don't waste our colorless mana, basically. This should be fine. 
uh, Pedron Archive. And then we can cast Mystic Forge next. And get some more triggers. And uh, Koizalaika wouldn't mind drawing next turn, so we'll keep that one on top, and for now play Scourge, and we can copy it as well. Probably wanted to reorder those triggers slightly, so Ulalek resolved first. But uh, I guess I'll still go for it here. All right, and get some more triggers. Opponents almost dead to this uh, Flesh Raker pinging them. And then next turn we'll be able to cast Kozilek to refuel. So hopefully we can dodge a board wipe. Yeah, I've been impressed by the Flesh Raker. The damage adds up. The tokens also help. And you can play it in a colorless deck. But now the Necrobloom's gonna start making zombies here. Call back to Field of the Dead, which is banned in Brawl. And in many other formats for that matter. Take our turn. And then I guess we could use Mystic Forge to get rid of my top card, since I don't really want to draw Sacred Foundry. Eh, Alanor Elves coming up next. And then... Might want to put Ulalek first. So we get to copy the Flesh Raker triggers as well. So first we wanna add one mana. Maybe should have made it green since we know we're drawing a ladder elves. And then we can sank these for colorless. Alright, and then get a bunch more triggers. And we'll just let the stack resolve. Draw seven. And the opponent's probably just dying to the flesh rakers. Alright, not bad. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the new Nadu, Winged Wisdom. This is one messed up card. If you haven't seen it in action yet, you will in a moment. But uh, yeah, we've got a keepable hand. Just don't have very high hopes in this matchup. To have a chance, you really need to have counter spells for Nadu or efficient removal spells. But those are difficult to find in an Eldrazi deck. So we need to get double blue and double red sorted. So steam vents, breeding pool, those are good starting points. Okay, for now, Guardian Idol. And then we can maybe set up a Kozal X command for X equals 2. Which can exile the Loam Speaker. So I might just main phase it here. Now, Roaming Throne also an option, but let's try to slow the opponent down. And then I could already play Mortal Sun next turn. So we're off to a promising start. But uh, once our opponent gets the ball rolling on Nadu, they're going to very quickly take over. They still need some equipment or other way to cheaply target their creatures. Keeping up 3 mana means I'm not really inclined to tap out for Immortal Sun. And instead we can try Spawn Gang Commander, which still applies pressure, but is not a disaster if it gets countered, or even Roaming Throne is an option. 
Yeah, I guess we'll try Roaming Throne. Since Spawn Gang is better if we play it with Ulalek out, I think. And then it gets countered. And this could fetch up at this point. Don't need Breeding Pool anymore. Maybe Red Whites. Or I guess we also want green, since some of our green spells are until Eldrazi. So I guess Stomping Ground it is. Opponent keeping up 3 mana once again. So they are heavy on the counter spells. Maybe waiting for a window to play the commander and go off while we're tapped out. Alright, Path of Annihilation is not bad. Can play that. And then my Eldrazi tokens can make mana. That resolves pretty swiftly. And then I think I just go for Ulalek here. So these can tap for a man of any color. And then just sacrifice one of them. Okay. And then next turn we have a few options, including Spawn Gang copied by Ulalek. So pretty passive start from our opponent, but again, don't uh, count them out, since Nando can go off out of nowhere. And the One Ring's not bad in the meantime, so could take a turn off playing Immortal Sun. Find a Mind Stone, pays for itself once we have Immortal Sun in play. So we'll start there. And then I could still cast Spawn Gang and copy it. So sure, we'll give that a try. Bone's got the one ring effect, so I can't hurt him anyway. So cast. And then we want to put Ulalek's trigger first, so we can copy the Spawn Gang's trigger. And there we go. Pass a turn. And now we actually have some removal at the ready with Spawn Gang. Since we can sacrifice or Eldrazi to deal 2 damage. Although I guess... Um, this also triggers when it becomes a target of a spell or ability we control. So that's why removal is not always great against Nadu, part of why it's so powerful. Since it still maybe triggers putting additional lands in play. But we'll see. If they have a bound spell for our entire board, they can set us back. It's just going to be a Nadu for now. Can they start targeting it somehow? They don't have an equipment yet. It's gonna be Elusive Otter for X equals 1 here. I think we let that go, because again if I want to use Spawn Gang I'll have to sack most of my board and then they still get to trigger Nadu a bunch. But now it will take 3 Eldrazi to take it out successfully. But we can maybe just go wide and then try to burn the opponent out. One ring activates. And play altar. Alright, take my turn. Not the most exciting draw steps. So we'll maybe sack Mindstone here, see what's next. Just a land. And what happens if I attack with everyone? Might want to leave some spawn back to sacrifice, because right now I can sacrifice, I guess, three of them, which would still be enough to take out Nadu, assuming they don't hit a land and then a protection spell. But yeah, we can still sack the spawn for mana. 
I think I'll try something like this. Point's just gonna take it all. So let damage happen. Point's at eight, so if I sack four tokens, they're dead, and that should be viable. That's one. Yeah, I'm kind of sad our opponent didn't get to go off with Nadu, although I've been on the receiving end a few times while testing the deck. And uh, it really only takes one equipment and maybe a landfall creature, and you're dead before you know it. And then we can fetch. And that'll do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Marwyn the Nurture, so mono green elves. And we've got a keepable hand. Turn one, Pilgrim. Turn two, we can Spiral. Try and get this monument out as soon as possible. Even though we're sort of light on colorless sources. With only the Shivan Reef here. But that's okay. So I think we stick to the plan, see what we draw. And put in a tapped Temple Garden. Okay, so next turn we could already play our commander. Flooded Strand probably wants to fetch red mana for the spawn gang commander, as our opponent plays a Paradise Druid. Yeah, if I play Ulalak first, I still won't necessarily have the mana to pay the two after playing a spawn gang. Could also just play the Forsaken Monument, and then next turn I'll have access to one more mana. That's not super relevant. So, yeah, maybe Spawn Gang to ramp out some of our other stuff is the way to go here. So I want red mana, other color, not super relevant, but we might want double blue at some point. So taking a bit of damage off our mana base. But now we've got a 5 mana creature we can maybe sacrifice to emerge as well which will help ramp out Amarkul in a way. So we've got a few ways we can play this. Monument also pumping up our spawn tokens could help deal some damage. Now we could also just sack a spawn to take out Marwyn. Possible our opponent's got a protection spell in hand. So a few ways we can play this. So 9 or rather 8 minus 5 is three, so it only costs us three mana to emerge the Nullkite. So I could even go Beanstalk into Nullkite or Nullkite into Emrakul. I guess would work as well. Just sacking the Nullkite itself, although yeah, I guess we won't be getting rid of cards in hand then. So yeah, a couple ways we could sequence here. I think I like up the Beanstalk first, and then Nullkite. Find an extra colorless source, and then I'm not going to bother trying to take out Marwyn. And then we'll uh, just draw with up the Beanstalk here, happy with my hand. And then, yeah, I could play one mana Emrakul. That seems worthwhile. And draw of Beanstalk. All right, and that's good enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play in the Eldrazi mirror match. And uh, drawing Urza's Incubator is kind of the worst case scenario here, since it's a symmetrical effect affecting the opponent's Eldrazi as well. So, can't really keep mostly based on Incubator here. This is a little bit better. So we can fetch a tap land, turn to idle, turn three, Chrysalis. Yeah, 
and then blue white has me covered on double blue and double red which are some of the uh, color requirements we have so we're off to a decent start opponent with it that heralds the end and uh, can play chrysalis Next turn, maybe player commander. Or we can get an old rifter in play as soon as possible. If I sank both tokens. Navigation orbs, not bad. Can be sacrificed to a ramp, essentially. Ooh, Ugin's binding. So we could be more patient since we have an old rifter to trigger it, but still kind of like the old drifter right now and start annihilating. And hit for four. Don't expect too much removal out of the Eldrazi deck. And yeah, an early Moldrifter is good enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Tovalar, Red-Green Werewolves. This hand's a little too ambitious, a few too many expensive cards, perhaps. Although that being said, Cold Steel Heart into the 4-drop uh, here does give us a nice bit of mana to work with. Although we're pretty far from doing anything else. Yeah, I'll take a mulligan. This is better. And then we can start with a Cold Steel Heart, setting up our Path of Annihilation. Maybe fetch mountain, name green. Although if they destroy my artifact somehow, that could backfire, so let's just play another land. Tenacious Pup, a pretty good turn one play. And now a Pack Song Pup as well. Immediately picks up an extra counter, so yeah, already a 3-3. Three, three. And next turn, Tovalar can help them draw a bunch of cards. So we're point off to pretty much the perfect start. Can fetch Forest, maybe. Although we have to be careful not to have two green sources, which won't let me cast Ulalek. So I can still fetch Mountain, since I don't mind having double reds in my mana base. And then, yeah, we're going to have to take a hit. But maybe next turn... We can cast a World Breaker. Don't think we can be patient enough to play Ulalek first. Alright, maybe our opponent's missing a third land. So that gives us a bit of a chance here. Get to untap. So, yeah, maybe this is my window to play Ulalek first. And then let's see, next turn, seven mana. Since these can both tap for mana and be sacrificed, I could copy the World Breaker, which is quite powerful. Although taking out their land right now is also pretty good. But uh, I'll let the opponent keep their lands for one more turn. Play Ulalek. And I can play Mindstone as well. Don't really need the blockers. And then next turn, have some fun. Opponent found the lanes, can play Tovalar, so we can block the pup. Paxong pup still hits us for five, draws a card. And we've got a few options here, but uh, let me start by fetching. Have these for colored mana. And then we have to be somewhat careful with the triggers. Make sure to leave colorless mana untapped as much as possible. Can tap this as well if needed. So six, seven, and then pay double colorless. Make sure Ulalek resolves first, take out a land. 
and then pay the two colorless to copy the ability as well that's still on the stack and uh, take out a different land. Okay. Resolve all. And that looks a bit better. No need to play Linebreaker, can copy it next turn. It turns to night somehow. I guess just because they have uh, enough wolves on the battlefield. Not because we didn't cast any spells. Pack song pop triggers. Can set up a double block so our opponent passes. And uh, yeah, we've got a few options now. But uh, copying the vanguard's not bad. That's probably good enough. So once again, I have to tap somewhat carefully. And there we go. Everything grows. And that's good enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Azuri, Blue-Green Proliferate. This hand's a little slow without any mana acceleration. This is better. And can play this one tapped for now. Might fetch a forest. Okay, opponent's gonna be poisoning us to death, it seems. That's not uh, the best of news. So this life gain also probably doesn't matter. So we could play Incubator, although I won't be able to play Thought Knot afterwards. It does set up a more explosive turn coming up next. Uh, let's see, Roaming Throne gives me a poison counter apparently now. Uh, I could also play Roaming Throne and then next turn Incubator and then play a two mana Chrysalis. If you twist my arm, I guess I can be convinced here. Quattle. That one's fine. I'm more worried about the poison, although now we've got a flying dragon coming up, perhaps. So, I'm gonna tap somewhat carefully. Incubator. This one's gonna poison me as well now. And then we can still Thought Not Seer. And now we get more plus one counters thanks to Roaming Throne. Yeah, I guess the Chrysalis doesn't trigger twice since it's on cast, but Thought Not's an ETB effect. And that's quite the hand. Probably taking Creature and Great Henge, leave them with Tide, which they currently cannot cast since they're missing double blue. And then do I want to trade for Quattle and Monk token? Yeah, I guess that's somewhat reasonable. Opponent takes it. And then next turn we can play our Null Kite, fetching an extra red source. Opponent passes. So not even playing Azuri. I guess they want to wait until they can pay three. Okay, Steam Vents is not bad either. So I could play the Nolkite, could also play Ulalak first and take it from there. We do have a Reach creature now to hold off the Flyers, so we're not in a hurry to play the Dragon. And if they picked up some Counterspell, this might play out better. Okay, pass it back. Opponent with a Roiling Regrowth, so that can fix for double blue. 
And then Quantal's gonna grow up to a 4-4 here. And a contentious plan. Proliferate up to 5 poison. Quantal 7-7 seven, seven now. Okay. Well, I think it's time for our dragon. Can just cast it without necessarily needing to emerge. If I emerge, I can copy it with Ulalek, I guess is the upside. Um, do we want to sack Thought Knots here? That's probably not the best idea, letting them draw a bunch. Could sack the Chrysalis, even though it's quite large. That seems acceptable. So we'll do this now. Emerge. And then make sure to stack these correctly. I guess it triggers twice with Roaming Throne. Not super relevant in this case. So we'll exile, draw three. Okay. And then I'm pretty happy with this hand, I would say. So we'll decline. And then it is a legendary, so I can only keep one. But then next turn, we'll be able to play a Kozilek. There's the Tide, so they can keep proliferating whenever they cast a spell. And it is on cast, so even countering it is not going to help necessarily. Worldbreaker, not bad here, could get rid of the enchantment. So I could start there. Maybe just cast it for 4 mana, and then we can use our uh, Emerge to play Kozilek. And then, of course, we're going to copy it. And get rid of the remnant as well. And then I guess I could copy once again, thanks to Roaming Throne. Uh, I think I still want to play Kozilek here. Sacrifice a real world breaker in case we want to get it back from the graveyard. And then draw a fresh hand. Okay. Can look into attacking, although they've got an 8 8 on the ground. And it's a little risky to not have a blocker for the poison creature. So we'll wait. So I've got a 5 drop, 6 drop. This is a 5 drop as well. Do we have a 4-drop in hand? We do not, so I cannot counter Tamiyo with Kozilek. Can get back Contentious Plan to proliferate. Up to 6 poison. No 2-drop in hand to counter that one. But I'm not hitting my spot here. Immortal Sun shuts down Tamiyo. Both Mirari's Wake and Monument are great here. May not need Mirari's Wake. So let's see. Tap our colored sources. Might want to leave red green available for Vanguard. So something along these lines. Play Monument. Patch wastes. And then play Vanguard, and I should be able to copy it twice now. Yep. 
sacrificing maybe it that heralds the end at this point. Gain some more life. And uh, let the triggers resolve. Alright, not bad. I think we can attack. And if I go all out, we'll see what happens, but I've got high hopes. Alright, so we got to see our 5-color Heldrazi deck in action. It's a deck that takes a while to get going, but once you get all these different engines online, the deck can be incredibly powerful. But again, it's not the most competitive choice out there, just because the commander doesn't have that immediate effect when it enters the battlefield. You need to untap with Ulalek and have a lot of mana to sink into the ability to really take advantage of it. So again, not the most competitive deck, but if you already have some Brawl decks built that are maybe better suited for your daily quests, then uh, this could be a nice backup deck if you enjoy the Eldrazi playstyle and are maybe tired of the monocolored, colorless versions of Eldrazi, if you will, then uh, having access to all five colors, of course, gives you a lot more options. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.